it was just white as snow. Hallelujah. Father, we love you this morning. And we thank you because you've told us that you, you continue to hear our voices. Father, so we bring our supplications, our prayers, and the cries of our hearts. We bring our pleas. Lord, we bring our specific needs to you this morning. Father, we ask that you meet us at the point of our need. That you supply those things that we need for Christmas, for the children. The things we need for the going to the end of the year. The new places you want to take us. Father, this morning as a church and as a family, we decree that there is a shift in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He's good, he's good, he's good, he's so good. Okay, so the title of today's mes message is how to have a successful year. As we come to the end of the year, many of us will be thinking about 2022. We'll be thinking about what it's, what's in store for us, what is happening, what's, what will happen. So we want to go into the word. And interestingly, the impression I got was to start by talking about stubbornness. Yeah, which is not how I wanted to start at all. Okay, so First Peter chapter 2, and I, now, I, I just want to explain from verse 1. It says, so put aside every trace of malice. So God says, put aside every trace of malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander and hateful speech. Okay, so he tells us that, and the reason he says so is in verse 2. See verse 2. It says... Like newborn babies, you should long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may be nurtured and grow in, in respect to salvation, its ultimate fulfillment. So God tells us that in order for you to grow successfully, there are things in our attitudes and our hearts we need to deal with. Is that, is that correct? Yeah? So you want to grow successfully. I don't know about you. I'm not quite able to grow. If I have something against somebody, when I, as soon as I close my eyes, that's the picture. That's the first thing. God is like, sorry, go away. Go away. Just go away from my presence. I don't know how he does it with you, but he just like, I can't, I can't be bothered with you. Come back when you sorted it out. Yeah? Why? Because your heart becomes an unconducive environment for the growth of the word. God's word is like a seed. If you take a seed... And you put it in the ground that is hard, uncultivated, is dry. No matter how potent that seed is, it will not produce anything. Why would it not produce anything? It will not produce anything because the ground is not conducive. Your heart is the center and the core of your being. Your heart navigates your life. It leads you. And that's why God communes with our heart. Okay, so Pastor Raji shared the scripture in doing the prayers that God will do a new thing in our lives. Yeah, that he will do a new thing. Okay, so the children of Israel, God tells them, he says, I'm taking you to a land filled with milk and honey. You know, a land where you will enjoy prosperity. And as we go into 2022, it symbolizes a kind of movement. And God is telling us, forget the things that are in the past. You know, don't remember, you know, your failures, your shortcomings, your limitations. Forget about them. Who can tell me the one thing, or, or let me say, three things that the children of Israel, that God was grieved, that caused God to be grieved with the children of Israel in the desert? Who knows the three things? Complaining, okay? Murmuring, okay? Unbelief. Okay. Okay. Do, do we have any more? I said only three. Do, do we have any more? So complaining, correct. Murmuring, unbelief. What? Pa pardon? Idolatry. Idolatry. Yes. Anything else? Thank you, Pastor Raji. Stubbornness. So we're going into 2022. And God is leading us as a people 
into a place, a new place spiritually, a place of increase, a place of abundance. But it may not come the way you think. But there's one thing that God is saying to us we need to deal with. Stubbornness. Not just me, you and all of us. Okay, stubbornness. Why stubbornness? Why do you think God wants you to deal with stubbornness or wants us to deal with stubbornness? Why? You don't go very far if you're stubborn. God can't reach you if you're stubborn. And stubbornness is a worship of self. So if you came to church and the choir had sang so well and they, you know, they led us in worship this morning, and then as I came, instead of opening my Bible, I brought the statue of Buddha, and I knelt down, and I started worshiping Buddha. Uh, what would you do? You start praying for me seriously. Okay. Yeah, I'll need deliverance, isn't it? Yeah, I'm in the wrong place. I should be in a temple somewhere. Okay. Would that be acceptable to you because you're Christians? No. Do you think it's ac acceptable to God? No. Okay. So in 1 Samuel chapter 15, God says to Samuel, he says, send Samuel to Saul who has been stubborn and disobeyed God. And he says he's going to lose his kingdom because of stubbornness. So when we are stubborn, we lose out. God has done everything. He owns everything. He has nothing to lose. And anytime he tells you and me something, it's because he loves us and he wants the best for us. But it never looks like it's the best that he has for you. Okay? So Proverbs 29 and verse 1, and I'm looking at the time. Proverbs 29 and verse 1. He who hardens his neck. So Yana said, Stiff neck. So a stubborn person is like, let's go. Goats. It's like a goat. Yeah? Pull. Okay, you know, we pull, we pull the goat. The goat's not coming. Yeah? Okay. Like stubborn. Yeah? Okay. So it says, he who hardens his neck and refuses instruction after being reproved. So God spoke to the children of Israel. He told them, he said, I'm sending you into Canaan land. I want you to go and possess that territory. I want you to go and take it over. He had spoken to them. He spoke to them in the wilderness. He, to he, he talked to them. But they kept being stubborn and rebelling against him. Now it says here, it says, he who hardens his neck. And refuses instruction after being reproved. So when God corrects us, says we'll suddenly be broken beyond repair. So stubbornness, the consequence of stubbornness is that we lose out and it's dangerous. I can't tell you the stories of stubbornness that, oh no. It, I can't tell you. Like I've not gained anything by being stubborn. You know how sometimes something looks very appealing. You do the thing and you're like, at the end of the day, you're just like, crass. Oh, that was a total, sin is a total waste of time. But it never quite seems like it when it's happening, isn't it? Okay, so there are some things I'm not meant to eat. Sometimes it's said, oh, I can't be bothered, I'm going to eat it today. I eat it and then I'm heavy, I'm so dense. My brain's not working and I'm crawling out of my bed. You know, like I'm 50, so I have pains in different parts of my body. It just, my body decides to do its own thing. So I already have that, then I'm eating the wrong thing. And I, I ask myself later, what's the point? So this is a question again. Are you stubborn? What do you think God thinks about that? What does his word say? We just read it, Proverbs 29, verse 1. Say, God, remove stubbornness from my life. Because the Bible says that that's equal to you worshiping an idol. So you are bowing down before you. You are the king. You are the one in charge of your life. It is you. My way or the highway, God? You are the one that is in charge. So God is saying that is unacceptable to me. Because of stubbornness, Saul lost his kingdom. He lost his kingdom. This, as we go into 2022, you don't want to lose anything. You don't want to lose things. I don't want to be stubborn. So let's talk to God. Let's talk to our father. He's our father. He loves us. There are three people in today's service. Three people. And there's a particular thing God has told you. And that thing is critical to your life and your destiny. 
So what I can see is I can see packages of blessings that are tied to you obeying God in a particular area. But you've refused to respond to God. Three, three people. Then I see this word, delay. God says that's why those things are delayed. Can we commit ourselves to our Father and say, God, help me, deliver me. I don't, I don't want to be stubborn. I want to do your will. I want to follow you. Please take away stubbornness from my life. In Jesus' name. Father, we come to you. We lift up our lives. Your word says that when we humble ourselves under your mighty hand, that in due season, you will lift us up. Lord, as we go into 2022, we want to leave the path of stubbornness. Your word says that it is idolatry, it is sin. And we know that because of stubbornness, the children of Israel did not enter into their inheritance. Father, every part, every area, anything in our lives that amounts to stubbornness, Lord, we lay down here before you. And we ask that you give us the grace and the heart and the attitude not to pick it back up again. Father, we ask that in the name of Jesus, that Lord, you will have your way in our lives, that you will glorify yourself. So there's someone in today's service. Um, God keeps talking at you about something. And so what I can see is I can see your back, like you. You meant to do something, but your, your back is to the instructions. And um, so you want to go in, you want to go in a particular direction. So the impression I get in my spirit is that direction that you want to go go to is going to be a dead end. It's going to be a dead end. It's like you'd have gone done what you wanted to do, but at the end of it, you won't. There, there will be no benefit, no blessing. And I feel that the Spirit of God is saying to you, come back. Come back. I don't know who that person is. Come back. Please, if God's speaking to you about a particular thing, please listen to him. Okay, so I'll go to Joshua chapter 1, but let me just talk a little bit. Um, and give an example. So you know when we're talking about stubbornness, we're talking about obedience, we're talking about different things. Um, when I turned 30, God told me to exercise, you know, start exercising. And I thought, oh, I can't be bothered. I hate jogging. Oh, I can't be bothered. Anyway, <laughs> to show you, I don't know. I was 30, and we had a church member who was a doctor, so he came to, he came to uh, do like, um, yeah, like a yearly examination on I and my husband. Anyway. So he did on both of us, and my husband has always exercised all these years. He's always, you know, either played football or basketball, or he's always active, always been active. So when he finished the exam, he just said, uh, because, of course, he's a doctor, he's in our church, so, and then he's examining me, and I have to take off my clothes. So his, his eyes are like, mm -hmm, and he was a bit uncomfortable, but he said, he said to me, he said, you need to exercise. So I heard from the doctor, and God was already telling me that took my time. So I hate, I hate jogging. I really used to hate jogging. I didn't. I don't think I. Even, I don't. Maybe I tried a bit. I don't even remember. I just didn't try. Didn't exercise. Okay. Um. When I was thirty, I was so busy. I used to sleep four hours every day. For a long time, I did that. I'm not saying three years. For a long time, four hours. I went to bed at 8 o'clock. I woke up at 12, and I prayed from 12 till morning. Sometimes I'll go, I'll wake up, I'll, I'll go back to bed after I've dropped my kids at school. And it was intensely busy, intensely busy. So I was busy. Part of it was that I loved working. That was part of it. Um, I didn't have good balance. 
Okay, so twice I broke down and I could not move any part of my body. Like I, I guess the doctors will understand. Yeah, I couldn't like I couldn't move. And then of course, being in Africa, I had malaria. I'd have malaria for like two weeks. I broke down. I didn't have balance. I needed rest. There were Sundays that I just needed to shut off and just rest. No balance. No exercise. Pastoring in Nigeria was very challenging. Pastoring anywhere is very challenging. It was very challenging. So I had hurts, I had pains, I had wounds that I had not dealt with. That impacts your health as well. It will come out somehow in some way. When I turned 40, I remember, I remember the day. That day, my friends were in our house and God was speaking to me about something and I just took it very lightly. That's what I did. Then he warned me that was me. A year, some, so that was like April. The next year after that, I was ill. So I was in hospital and I was diagnosed with cancer. I had a stage three tumor. I had baggage, lack of exercise, I had stress. When, I, when we moved to England, it was still the same thing. Two, the first few years I walked up in London, it was, it, was, it, was, it was intense. It was very driven. I walked on Sunday. I walked on Saturday. I went to work. I was working. But you know that in scripture, literally God tells us that Sunday or whenever day it is, or whenever day you choose, is a Sabbath day. And do you know what? He calls it holy. Tell somebody, say your rest is holy. Please. Yeah? Not just your rest is holy. Your rest is holy. It's something that you ring fence and you protect. So I wasn't listening. I was doing my own thing. And I was carrying all this baggage. I've had everything, I've had chemotherapy, radiotherapy, whatever, everything. I've had all of it, yeah? But one time, I remember I used to wake up really early, super early to pray when I was ill. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, Nandri, you have hurts, you have wounds, you have pains that you have not dealt with. And in 1 Corinthians 11, it says that when we come to take communion, when we come to share communion, it says we need to do it properly. So when you have unforgiveness, you have hurt, you have pain, you're not forgiving people, and you come and take communion or you participate in... I know, I know nowadays it's so funky, but I guess if it was in those days where the thunder and the lightning and the fire just entered the assembly, all of us would sort ourselves out before we come. And when we come, we say, don't talk to me too much. Amen, Lord. <laughs> we'll do whatever I say. But it's not, it's not like that anymore. So sometimes we just think we can't do certain, certain things, isn't it? So um, I remember it was early in the morning. I was on my face in the ground in our living room. And then God said to me, he said, you're carrying all this baggage and all this unforgiveness inside of you. You need to sort it out. You need to let it go. He said, part of the reason why you're weak and why you're sick is because all of this is inside of you. And if I come to church now, and I know that there's something inside of my heart, I'm not doing that communion. I don't care. But let's forget about communion. Let's just talk about every day. Is there something against somebody? Just that little thing. Kenneth Higgins says, he says, he searches his heart, and when he sees whatever it is, he kills it, he stamps it out, he doesn't allow it to exist. Because no matter what, Satan will find the ground, he will use it some way. So, this is my question. 
Is there anything? Hallelujah. Is there anything in your heart? Anything. We'll pray again. Anything. No matter what it is. Tiny. Let it go. Sometimes it's that you just don't understand or you don't get somebody. It's fine. Give them some time. God is working on all of us. Give them some time. You know, Jesus prayed. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. There's someone as you are praying, your heart is getting healed in a particular area. You like, you're experiencing a healing. And I don't know if it's the same person or another person. Some chains, I literally see chains being broken. Being broken. Another person says, but you don't know what they've done to me. God is saying, let it go. Because they've done, we've done worse to him. We've done worse to him. This, this is the impression I get that God is saying to us, church, I am looking at your heart. I'm looking at your heart. Your heart. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you this morning. Father, we lift up our hearts to you. Your word says that we should guard our heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Father, we pray. There's someone here, you've left something that God has given to you to do. I walked away because you're offended. God says, go back. Go back. Okay. I was about to pray, but one thing we need to pray about again. Can we lift up our voices and pray for ourselves? Say, God, deliver me from bitterness. Okay, bitterness. Let's lift up our voices. Let's talk to God. Say, God, deliver me from bitterness. Thou not have, I won't have, or I won't keep bitterness. God is saying that bitterness is tainting your worship. I don't know if it's one person, three, I don't know. He says that bitterness is tainting your worship. It's, it's spoiling the worship. That bitterness. I can see someone, I can literally see ground with vegetation growing on it and rain falling back on that ground as we deal with this. And God is restoring peace to you. That person, God is restoring. There's an inner peace that God is restoring to you. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all that you have done. Lord, we thank you for your word that says that we should guard our heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our hearts and we ask that your reign, the reign of the Holy Spirit, your word, that it will grow in our lives and in our hearts. Father, we let go of everything that will hinder you, that will stop us from enjoying and having a successful 2020. Father, we pray that you will equip us as a church with strength to go forward, to do your will in every area. Lord, we bless and exalt you. We honor and we adore you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.